Friday, October 19th, 2018, Scott Inser, Tinfoil Hat Club. Well, I have a guest tonight. Patrick join, Patri- Patricia joins in tonight with the personal experiences and the issues that she has faced over the years. Now, as, as we go through this tonight, I want you to understand that a lot of the circumstances, a lot of the personal involvement that have that are going to be explained tonight are firsthand one-on-one, and I know that you'll be able to relate to this. And as that goes uh, into a deeper uh, subject, then I hope that it makes sense to you and that you're able to tie or at least bring things together. So belief systems that are damaging to ourselves and others around us, this includes the worldview as a whole. Since Satan deceiveth the whole world, so the point tonight is that we're, are you basically wasting your time trying to change the uh, unteachable, those people that will just not uh, hear the truth? And anyways, as, as you know, you've run into this where they think you're crazy, they do not want to believe what you have to say, that as this is described tonight, then hopefully, again, that makes more sense. Now, I want you to to know that next Friday, I'm going to be going to Area 52, which is Tonopal. I'm going to, again, do another interview with Eric Dollard. He has a desire to update some information, also the future of his projects that he's doing. And... I'm really not sure what it's going to entail because I know that there's been some frustration with the finances that uh, has not really come around to complete his projects. But in that, uh, hopefully some good things will come out of it. All right. All right, again, um, let me bring on Patricia here. Now, Patricia... You're unmuted. You're live here with me. And so go ahead and just uh, introduce yourself and and, uh, take it from there for where you think you want to go. Hi, everybody. Um, This is Trish. Um, I go by Trish. My real name is Patricia. But I want to talk about belief systems. Um, I'm coming across this more and more that people get stuck in a worldview a belief system, and I'm putting the puzzle pieces together. And it seems like everybody, everybody is suffering from it. And it's, it's, a, it's a very strong form of mind control. I believe, I believe because it's an invisible force, it's the invisible force that, that is behind a person's behavior. It's one of the strongest factors that affects our decision-making. So when we get stuck in a belief system, people will reject all facts. You could show them 2 plus 2 is 4 and it's still 6 in their mind. It's it's a very strong and very invisible force. So I think it has to be some form of witchcraft. Well, when we're talking about witchcraft, we're talking about altering the perception we're, we're talking about altering the mind and the conclusion, your cognitive ability to reason, that is through spiritual means. Now, when we talk about witchcraft, when we talk about it in the Old Testament and the subject matter as I address it, are basic two forms. One, there can just be an influence because of the, the peer pressure, because mm-hmm. of, of the information that's brought out can cause you to draw a conclusion that is not uh, inherent to the fact. Now, that's still a form of witchcraft because it's a type of mind control. But most people, when they think of witchcraft, they think of spells and hex and vexes and so forth. And yes, that is absolutely absolutely the case. In fact, if, if you continue in the lie and believe the lie, then your conscience can be seared. You can then be part of the lie to the point of non-return. And unfortunately, our society has come to that. What do you think about uh, that? Uh, that's exactly correct. I was going to say that they are very dangerous to have a belief system because it results in a closed-off mind, a seared conscious, and basically everything is based on emotions instead of reality or facts. We saw the movie Chappaquiddick the other night uh, with uh, you know Ted Kennedy with the death uh, of his assistant. 
And at the end of the show, they showed um, interviews on the street, I don't know whether it was Chicago or New York or wherever it was, and they asked, uh, did they believe what Ted Kennedy said? Did the spin doctors convince the people that what he did was by accident, it was an innocent, he didn't try and cover anything up, when in reality, the whole thing was a lie. He had been drinking, he was actually fleeing from the authorities and went over the bridge. He had the opportunity to rescue the woman, he did not, but yet he led the people to believe, and so a belief system wanting to find good in something, they said that they would vote for him. Now, we know that Ted Kennedy... Uh, died a few years ago, I believe it was brain cancer, which was linked, I believe, also to cell phone use because he used to have one of the old molar roller bricks always stuck to his head. But the the point of it is, is that everything was a line, it was a spin, but people still wanted to believe him, and so they chose not to hear the facts, and then the, the conclusion was that they would vote for him. So that that just tells you that if you tell a lie long enough, you, you repeat it enough, people will believe it. And we see that, too, with church teaching. That's right. I mean, just look at that. That has to be witchcraft. What other explanation can you have? You can show them the facts. Even the movie today, I bet you Ted Kennedy still would have, if he was alive, a, a huge following. Even knowing the circumstances that the thing was a setup. You know, I I mentioned that years ago, I had the opportunity to be at a deliverance of someone who was, quote, a spin doctor in Washington. And it turns out that the individual was actually SRA, satanically ritually abused. They were programmed. They were intentionally put in that position. They were able to do things very very much like, you know, when, when the Clintons were in office and you had uh, uh, the old rascal himself with all the sexual harassment that the spin doctors would get to work and they would do something, uh, cause an event, focus on some other subject, a uh, bomb, an, an aspirin factory or a baby formula factory, and otherwise take the focus off of the real issue. And that was what this man did. And what happened during the deliverance was a particular spirit that came out was a wolf spirit. And what's interesting is that spirit actually came out and attached to a woman who was in the audience, who was SRA herself, was satanic and ritually abused. So that was one of the first experiences I saw of a transfer of a spirit, and it was absolutely amazing. And now the whole thing was controlled. The spirit then was commanded to leave the one once found out, bound to the individual, because there had to be some renouncing. And in that renouncing was then to put the state of the individual back into what God intended, not the altered state that comes from witchcraft. That's right. Yeah, you told me that story before, and I found that really interesting, and, and it's a good example of why we need to have our armor of God on at all times. It's really important because something can jump from somebody else onto you if you're not clear, if you're not uh, in repentance. Well, you know, the ear gates and eye gates, and during prayer, when I'm praying for someone during deliverance, as I lay hands upon their head, sometimes I'll cover their eyes. And I'll then break anything that was part of the mind control or even close the third eye, which opens up into the spirit realm, which opens up to the lies and deception of lying spirits and those things of witchcraft. And then also placing my hands over the years and in this, uh, that I close these doors that their ear gates and eye gates now only receive the truth that comes from the Holy Spirit and not from the demons. Now, generations of those that I've worked with show time and time again that this lie has continued in the family. So when you have someone that's in a political stance, let's say that they are a Democrat or they're a Republican, you'll note that the splitting of the country was the whole premise of this concept, this uh, two-party system. And so you have people who will continue to vote one party or the other regardless of the circumstances or the person that is running for office has shown that they're unreliable. They are liars. They are deceivers. Now, when Bush came into office, Bush Jr., he followed after his father, 
who repeatedly told us that he was there to bring in a new world order. But yet the Christian church rallied around Bush, lying, saying that he was a Christian, and he was the farthest thing from the truth. In fact, behind closed doors, he was known to giggle and laugh about how he had deceived the Christians. And I, uh, I myself at the time wanted that hope that he was someone that was going to be a leader. And next thing you know, we get 9-11. Next thing you know, we get the Patriot Act. And so here we are today with our rights taken away. If you enter into uh, uh, an airline, if you go into an airport, your rights are immediately canceled. At that point, you're subject to uh, the, the world system of policing. Yep. And that means that all your rights are stripped away. Well, that's not what the main intent was for the Constitution. Now, the Constitution and the United States being founded in Freemasonry, those things that had come from England uh, with the legal systems transferred over. 1776 was not the new beginning of the United States. Fourth of July was not the celebration of our freedom. What we had then was a new contract, a new fulfillment for the new world order. And so whether you have Yorkshire, whether you have any of the other Masons, they have been in control. They've been running D.C. And so this system, belief system that we have, has been programmed into us since we were children. Just as, you know, you pass on to your grandchildren your beliefs. Now, Today is a little different. When we have an education system, you know, we were talking about the, the Dewey Decimal uh, System, which comes from Dewey himself, the, the educator, that in it was actually a communist plot. In it was a programming to educate uh, children, or I should say program them into a belief system, which again, I, I believe is why liberalism has taken off. Same thing with the 60s and the CIA infiltration of, of the hippie movement. But in it, we have a conclusion that today things are not right. They're not right because the United States divided. Those things that should have been held sacred, such as uh, the unborn in the womb, now can be eliminated at the blink of an eye. And their constitutional rights, because in reality, the Constitution should protect them, and it's not. So whatever we have today, what we have is a lie. And as a whole, and it comes from a belief system that is, has virtually destroyed this country. Uh, they certainly have. And uh, unfortunately, I think every single one of us is infected. Yes, that's right, infected with a belief system. Um, I just wanted to give a story about how contagious belief systems are. As you had mentioned, they can go through a generational family. It could be a family thing. Um, let's say your last name was King and, and you were wealthy and, and your parents told you you were special and gifted and wealthy and you don't associate with the Browns over there. That's a belief system. But I'd like to share a personal story about me when I was six years old. And um, it's nothing I'm really proud of. It's kind of embarrassing. But when I was a little girl, I was afraid of everything. I was afraid of spiders and dogs in the dark. Everything. Anything you can imagine. I was just this uh, terrified, shaky little child. <laughs> and uh, because of that, my dad and my stepmom labeled me as a, a fraidy cat or a scaredy cat. Well, unfortunately, that belief system stuck with them you know, over 30 years later, they are still in the mindset, their worldview is set that I am a fraidy cat, or I'm a scaredy cat, which, come on now, that's 30 years ago, I don't think there's anything I'm afraid to do. I'm not. Um, I think I'm, I'm a pretty bold person, and every day I speak my truth, and I'm out there, and even though it doesn't make me the most popular person to, to say, you know, what I believe... I don't do the bandwagon. Anyway, so I think I'm pretty, pretty bold. I, you know, drove across the United States by myself. I have numerous ex exceptional um, examples of ways I think I've been brave. But 30 years later, in their mindset, I'm still a scared little six-year-old. Which, what, it, what it's done now is it has passed that uh, belief system on to my kids. So in my children's mind, 
I am a scaredy cat. Oh, you know, so anything I say from now on, they just disregard. Oh, you know your mother or you know mom. She's she's afraid of everything. And that's not true at all. That's not true at all. I think I'm a very brave person. But I just wanted to show you how an example um, that is not only disrespectful to me as a parent and it makes the house out of order, because now my children don't respect me, but even further, it endangers the lives of my children, because if I have discernment and I say, look, I don't want you hanging out late with this person because X, Y, Z, my discernment tells me because, you know, I, I have 35 years experience on my kids. I know what, you know, when somebody's the red flag, okay, my kids are just going to disregard me as being ridiculous, silly, a scaredy cat because of a worldview that was... I wouldn't say forced upon them, but they were tricked into believing it. And it's not true at all. So I just wanted to use that as an example how a worldview can cause a domino effect and be passed on from generation to generation. I myself had a view of who I was because of the interaction with my family with the education system when I was a, a small boy. Now, I was extremely dyslexic as a child. And so schooling for me was very difficult, trying to, to uh, relate to the form of teaching. And it was in the Tempe School Districts in Arizona, which was very heavily influenced by Arizona State University. And all of the new... Um, techniques that they were trying or the different uh, ways of trying to educate children, they were trying to move things around within our school that was not of the norm. And so there was a, 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 a gap for myself that I wasn't able to keep up because of my dyslexia. Now, it wasn't until I got out of school that I learned how to learn on my own. And I found out that something that was completely backwards or something that was more um, energy-based, meaning that I learned through, through the, the interaction, through having uh, my hands on, by being part of a group that was building something that had success, then there was a different way of programming. There was a different way of bringing that information to me. And eventually I went on to electrical engineering. I went on to work for General Electric. I went on to work for Intel and Motorola and some of the big companies. Uh, things that I was told as a kid that there's no way that I, could, I was uh, smart enough to do it. That's the way they would say it. Well, that system or that belief still stuck with me, and I had to break that. And that was part of the deliverance um, motivation. As, as I was being delivered from the demons, as I was being delivered from the curses, then this belief system that was basically put into me started to go away. And then I start having more confidence. I started understanding more about why I believe this system, and I was able to rebuke it. I was able to not receive it. And even today, when something is hurled upon me, they, you know, someone will try and state one thing or another, um, I don't believe it. I do not receive it. I will not receive it. Now, if it's something that is based in God's Word, if it's something based that is um, a confirmation that I need to change something, then there's a quiet and still little spirit that says, yes, Scott, this is what you need to change. Instead of being beat over the head, there's a peace about it. So this confirmation. Now, that's unfortunately not the case with most people. There, when, when you have stubbornness, when you have someone, just as the Old Testament says, as if it was witchcraft, you have rebellion the inability to, to function in truth. And so in your rejection of the truth, you stand in a belief system that is actually terribly destructive to you and the people around you. Just And I'm sorry, I, I keep bringing up um, you know, liberalism, and it may offend some people, but this, is, this ideology is insanity. It has nothing to do with facts. Probability, as the engineering uh, status or the, the environment that I was involved with, 
involved in it, you had to look at the facts. You had to look at two things and make a decision between one or the other that was going to bring success, that was going to be beneficial, that was going to uh, finalize something. Well, that's not the case with this when, when you have liberalism. You have, you have a, a, a belief system that continues to, to propagate the lie onto other people. And then once that infection sets in, then it then becomes destructive to all. And, and I know you've seen that. Oh, I've, I've seen it. I've experienced it. I'm also a kinetic learner, Scott. That's the way I learned, too. But um, I wanted to talk. You had mentioned that you don't receive it. And the reason why is I believe they are trying to subconsciously, I think they're trying to word curse us with witchcraft. You know, very much so. In fact, um, you know, the, when I pray, I say word curses spoken curses, witchcraft curses, hexes, vexes, and spells. Now, as crazy as it all sounds, you know, like it's some kind of Harry Potter thing, it actually is the truth because those that I have prayed for, and I don't know how many people, uh, we're talking thousands over the years, by the basics of spiritual warfare, by standing in the truth of Jesus Christ and combating evil, by speaking the words, when I speak, I don't, I do not just speak into the physical. I speak into the spiritual, and over the with the authority with Christ who is in me, I then have all power and authority over the wiles of the enemy. And my spoken words can be like a sledgehammer. I've had people before, literally, when I'm coming in and I'm knocking things out, say so they it's like they see stars, you know, boom, like getting hit over the head. But it isn't them. It's the demons virtually being broke apart. If you've ever trap shoot, if you've ever gone out with a shotgun and, and uh, went at clay, you know, clay birds, when you shoot them, when you hit them perfectly, they go into a star formation when they shatter. And this is kind of the description that I've heard. And, I, and what's happening is not only you're breaking the stronghold, but the very spirit itself is being displaced. It's being removed. And once that spirit is removed, and I also say you'll come out of every part, you will not f fragment off, you will not leave anything behind. And so as these com things come out, I bind and I rebuke them and I send them to the pit and I forbid them from retaliation, ambush, or sabotage and return it in any form. And so this war that we're in is over the mind because in your mind is where fear takes place. Now, fear is one that comes from evil. God tells us he has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and of sound mind. And so what it means that anything that is fearful that causes us from moving forward in who we should be, otherwise you're worried about relationships, you're worried about decisions, you're worried about this or that, these things can be demonically uh, induced. They can be word cursed from other people. And because of this, especially as a child, how many of you, unfortunately, have heard from the parents, you'll never amount to anything. You're no good. You're, you, no one will love you. You, you, mm -hmm. you know, this is a word curse. And I can assure you that the parent that's speaking this, that the very same thing was done over them. And, and as you know, some of you say, well, I'm never going to act like my parent. I'm never going to do the things that my parents did to me. And 10 years, 20 years later in a marriage and, and you've got kids, you find yourself doing the very same thing. You may even look in the mirror and you see your, your father, you see your mother. And it's, it's a quite um, uh, an eye-opener. Because then you realize that it's a part of your DNA. It's a part of the word curse. It's a part of the generation curse. It's something that has been implemented on people to be passed down through the line. So, so these are things that we need to assess. Just, just as, you know, when you want to make a decision about something, get a piece of paper and draw a line down the middle of it. And on one side, the pros, and on the other side, the cons, and see what, you know, balances out. Now, that's not always the best way for everything, especially when it comes to a personal relationship. But the point of it is, is that what is the long term? The, the older that I get, I'm now in my 60s. And, you know, so two-thirds of my life are gone. So what really matters to me now? The things that matter to me one-third into my life? Uh, they don't matter anymore. 
And so when I assess, when I do the spring cleaning, when I look at my life and look at the stuff that has been spoke over me, the stuff that has been done to me, then I need to just shed this off. Hit the reset button. See who you are. See who you are in Christ. And from that point forward, then you're able to see yourself as God sees you. Remember, you are loved. You are treasured. You are adored. You are a jewel in the eye of the Most High God. And anyone that tells you contrary to that, especially if you're one who's trying to do the best and trying to do what's right in the name of Jesus Christ, that anything other than that is a lie, and it's condemnation that comes from the evil one. And I know that you've run into that. Oh, yeah. My whole life, pretty much. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to circle back to some examples of belief systems. Sure. And um, it's probably not going to make anyone happy to hear this, but uh, the liberal left would be an example of a belief system. The alt-right, the religious zealots. Uh, and uh, the propaganda, uh, the people who are into the propaganda, um, they are stuck in belief systems. And let me give you an example. Um, like a liberal left may assume that anyone who likes Trump is a Nazi and a racist. That, that's not true. That is not true. Some are, yes, but not every single one of them. Okay, and then the alt-right has views that the left just want to destroy the, the core values, the morals that's not necessarily true, maybe a few, but for the most part, uh, the liberals have a bleeding heart. They they want to just uh, love everybody and they want everybody to love everything and accept the world, but they just see it a little differently than, than the other side. <laughs> we'll just say it like that. And then there's the religious zealots, okay? Um, there are people who get stuck into their religious, it's about the church. It's not about the relationship with Jesus, okay? I am a firm believer in Jesus. He is my Lord and Savior. I'll say that right now. Um, but I don't go to church because of the res religious zealots. There's a lot of backstabbing. There's a lot of witches. Scott's had uh, some on the show. They admit they send people in to infiltrate the church. It's a fact. Okay, but can you tell a church person who is in their belief system, they won't accept that, even though you can show them the proof. Look, we've had witches admit that they go in there to tear it up, to seduce the pastor, to, to spread gossip, to cause dissent. Happens all the time. Okay, and uh, yet the church people still go and uh, they're stuck in their belief system. And then there's the, you know, the people who are into the propaganda. They believe everything they watch on the news or read on the internet. They don't research, okay? Example would be, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of research on this HEK-293 stem cells with the aborted fetal tissue. I post it up on Facebook. Facts on it. Facts. They can go on... Um, is it uh, Sensenix website? I'm sorry, I can't remember. But the website... Um, that is putting this in the products like Pepsi and Gatorade, okay? You can show them facts and people come back with, well, Snoop says, or Snoop says this, and Snoop's, come on now, people. We know Snoop's isn't for real. Goodness gracious. Anyways, um, but they are stuck in their belief system that what they read online is true, okay? They won't do the extra mile or the extra step just to research and go to the company website and see it for themselves, Okay, so um, I also want to just quickly go over how belief systems are, how they develop, you know, their environmental factors. Um, Scott had mentioned family beliefs, you know, uh, religious beliefs. Uh, sometimes your belief system is based on what you heard in school. You know, the earth is round. How do you know? Because we were told that, okay? Okay. There's cultural beliefs, like uh, Italians are the best cooks, or over in France they think Americans are lazy. All Americans. Is that true? No, it's not. Some of it's true. Part of it's true, but it's not. Uh, you got people who get stuck in their political beliefs. You know, their mom was a Democrat, their grandma was a Democrat, everybody's a Democrat. And they get stuck in a belief system that the Democrats are for the poor and oppressed. Okay, and if you vote Republican, you're a racist. That's not true. Okay, um, another another way people get their um, 
belief systems is just from the propaganda. Things you hear on the news, the TV, the movies, books. Um, I have a, a quick story, if you don't mind. Um, one of my Facebook friends um, was doing a transvestigation. I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but um, on Wonder Woman, the actress, not not Linda Carter, but the newer one. And, you know, I just kind of looked at it and go, eh, you know, it's plausible. Um, but uh, because, you know, just based on the scientific data, um, there are a lot of people who are covertly transgendered and we just don't know it. So you have to learn how to how to spot it in like structural like skeletal systems right so anyways this person had a link and had all these facts and look at the forehead look how the brow sticks out look at this look at that and this one lady was like "Mm -mm, nope she's Israeli okay so somebody else says well what is that supposed to mean Israeli women don't lie we're the apple of you know Jesus's eye I mean that is a belief system um, so I just thought that was kind of a, a little humorous one. Um, you know, a lot of people do get stuck into, I mean, I, in my personal view system, I don't think God has favorites. I think God's favorites are people who love him and honor him and respect him, not just because you're born, because that would make God a racist, and God is not a racist. Well, I wanted to address the label. You say racist, okay? When you engage with someone that is programmed through, let's say, George Soros' education system, then this label saying, well, you're a racist, from that point forward, you as an individual then have to uh, stand and defend yourself as a racist, So the thing is, you do not receive that. No, I am not a racist. Well, you've already been labeled. So from that point forward, you're considered a racist, no matter what the argument, no matter what the proof is, the individual that has slammed you with this, that has put that label on your forehead, then will always see you, or the surrounding people will always see you as a racist. And that makes it very tough. Now, that is part of witchcraft. That is one that has altered the perceptive perception, the the minds of the people that have surrounded. And, you know, you, you talk about uh, uh, bleeding hearts. Now, when we talk about someone who is sympathetic to an individual or a situation, then, then you believe that they have their hearts in the right place. But then you find out that they're willing to sacrifice children in the womb. They're willing to sell your constitutional rights out. They're willing to allow somebody who is a criminal that should be behind bars, that has already committed many crimes, that has done things that are horrific, that is a threat to society, a threat to women, threat to children, and they'll, they'll absolutely fight to the death for them to be released. That doesn't make any sense. And so when you hear the philosophy, when you hear the mindset of those that they call themselves liberals or bleeding hearts or whatever, there again is a complete, uh, well, it's stinking thinking. There is no logic. If you lay things out that are to be uh, a society of peace, a society of freedom, a society of of safety, then these factors are not part of the conclusion. And because of that, then it is something that does not come from God. Now, here's, here's one thing to remember. Now, especially for those who are charismatic, those who have been in the church, and I've been around this stuff for some time, that when, when the Holy Spirit comes in, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of, of the, the, the surrounding um, issue, there is a peace that comes. So let's say uh, one time there was a, 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 I I thought I was going to get hit, uh, T-boned in my car. There were two guys who were fleeing from the authorities. They had driven through a parking lot and were coming out into the main road when I just happened to pass. And they were going so fast that they lost control of their car, and they were going to smash into me. 
Now, something happened. Instead of fear or concern, as I looked over at the car, a peace came over me. And the car, literally like shock absorbers, like the hand of uh, an angel, grabbed the front of that car, slowed it down, stopped it within one inch of hitting my door. I was looking at the two men that were in the car. Their eyes were as big as saucers because they couldn't believe what had just happened. So as I passed by, there was a peace. God was in control. I didn't have to worry about it. The two guys shook their head. Uh, They accelerated and took off, and the police chase continued. And when I see people in the church who are absolutely euphoric and they're rolling on the ground and they're acting like they're being, some, some unfortunately, sexually stimulated, this is not God. Mm-mm. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He is not going to cause people to bark. He's not going to cause them to act like they're drunk. He's not going to cause them to act like a bunch of idiots. And, I'll, and unfortunately, that's what I see. But when the Holy Spirit is truly there, there is a peace that comes upon you. And in this peace, you can be still and know he is God. Yes, that's a, that's a really cruel trick Satan does or his demons do. And I've seen it. I've seen it in the church. I've seen people uh, rolling in laughter like hyenas and just really looking a fool. Um, completely different. This has nothing to do with speaking in tongues. There is speaking in tongues that I think is angelic, and I think there's speaking in tongues that's very demonic. And um, I can't tell you how to audibly tell the difference, but I can feel the difference, okay? I can feel when when the energy around me is, is angelic and peaceful, like Scott says, versus uh, a madhouse and confusion. Um, I wanted to go briefly over some uh, personality symptoms of people who are stuck in a belief system. And I'm sure you can all relate to these. Um, one is ignoring facts. That's a big one. That's like uh, Scott was just uh, talking about that. Um, You know, you could say, hey, if you're about peace and love, then why is it okay to abort a child in the womb? That's kind of counter of what love is, right? Okay, so that would be an example of ignoring facts. Um, Some people, when they're stuck in a belief system, they will evade a direct question. Politicians do it all the time. You know, you'll ask them a question and they'll talk about something completely different. Um... You can tell when you're someone's stuck in a belief system when the argument goes around and around and around and you don't get anywhere. Um, the person stuck in a belief system will often parrot popular phrases. Um, Scott told me this one story about, uh, well, my God is bigger. And, uh, you know, you will hear that. It's, it's a way to, to shut you up. And, and you know, they kind of like are shaming you publicly. Um, some other uh, examples of a person in a uh, belief system would be gaslighting. They make fun of something you're saying publicly, um, or they may question your sanity. Like, what happened to you? You used to be so nice, or um, are you sure you're feeling okay? You know, those kind of things. That, that, that's a public shaming, you know, if they do it on Facebook um, or if they say it to other people. Um, And it's their way to shut you down so they can win. See, it's about winning. Um, The the people in a belief system will often get on a moral high ground to place themselves above you and others. They may um, be self-appointed leaders in a a group, like a, I don't know, like a a meetup group or something. They may just take us, assume the responsibility, or they may go around bragging about their spiritual gifts like I have discernment as a way to put you down and you're lower than them because they said the punchline first the magic words I have discernment as a way to just keep you under their thumb okay um another thing they do is they'll point out other people's mistakes and wrongdoing instead of addressing their own I see that all the time on the news um they will lie, exaggerate, stretch the truth. Um, you know, it, they get loud. I notice some will start to shout and draw attention to get people on the bandwagon. Um, often they'll project and blame others for the very thing they're guilty of. And let me give you an example. Um, 
I hear this all the time that Trump is a Nazi. I'm not pro Trump. I'm not pro Hillary. I'm not pro politics. Okay, I'm just going to get that out there. I, I think it's all a, a big wrestling show. But um, and it's all it's all scripted. But anyways, that's my personal belief system. And I can go into that another time. Um, but uh, one example back to the Trump thing is that there are people on the left that say Trump is a Nazi, a Nazi. I hear that all the time. But look which side believes in socialism. Is it Trump's side? No, it's the left. They are pushing socialism. The other thing is, who is their spokesperson? It's the kid. I'm not going to say his last name, but we'll just say the pig kid. Pig um, you know, boar. <laughs> that sounds rude to call him a pig, but um, his last name is of that animal. And he's the one going around with the armband and the Nazi salutes. Hey, and then, do you see? That's projecting. That. <laughs> it's a form of gaslighting, too. Oh, completely, yeah. completely. Um, they're experts at, at flipping things backwards. That was one example. Um... I, I was just telling Scott right before we went on, um, there was a person who posted something on Facebook, and he copied some comments right out of YouTube from eight years ago under a targeted individual's video who is uh, talking about their horrible experience as a targeted individual. Now, I'm going to read a troll, okay, a troll who's stuck in a belief system, his response eight years ago to this video, okay? Now, see, this is how they flip it backwards, okay? He writes, you need to stop posting these hurtful videos and comments right now. It's scumbags like you that make it difficult for citizen patrol groups to track targeted criminal subjects, monitor and inspect their homes, etc., where do you get off insulting these brave men and women who are true patriots? I have children and I want their neighbors to be safe, their neighborhood to be safe. And decent folks from anti, and keep decent folks from anti-social creeps like you. I hope the police find you for posting this crap and let you rot in jail. Okay? Now this is victim shaming. Do you see? This is a perp who thinks he's a social justice warrior for, you know, the neighborhood watch. Yay. And what is he doing? He is defending his right to hurt people, to stalk people, to, to break and enter, to report their whereabouts. People that have not been guilty of a crime. These are just people who are put on a government program. And it's, it's uh, what do you call it? It's underground. So they have no, there's no trial that made them guilty of anything. Most of these people are just MK Ultra or SRA or somehow got ticked the wrong person off, maybe over a, a, um, a, a silly offense like uh, cutting them off, okay? And they get stuck in a program for life, which they are harassed. You know, I, I keep thinking of the term that is put on, on those who do not believe in homosexuality, and they, they say that you're homophobic. Well, again, as a Christian, one who understands who they are, that we have not been given a spirit of fear, as I mentioned earlier, because phobic means that you have a fear of something or you fear homosexuals. That's not the case. In fact, it's our love of these people, them not wanting to be in a, a demonic uh, circumstance that is very destructive in their end brings an early end to them. And and so this, how everything is upside down has been orchestrated this way for a very long time. Now, um, when, when we look at gossip, when we look at slandering and evil speaking, these are things that were warned in Scripture not to do. And unfortunately, within churches, within our government, within corporations, within work environment, within the world itself, that is the way it is. And anyone that partakes in it, and it's, it's very easy to get sucked into. When you do, again, the words that you speak, you know, there's a, an old saying that if you go up to, let's say, a clock tower, you go up to a steeple, and you take a downed pillow, and during a very heavy windstorm, take that pillow and cut it open and let all the feathers release. 
then go and try and bring them back. So the words that you say, the emails that you do, the things that you, that you have spoken can go out to different people. And then with their belief system, with what's going on in their life, they can take an alter and change it and twist it to make it even worse. And so we have today the lies that have been perpetrated on America that have, that have literally led us down a path of so being narrow-minded to, uh, you know, anything of the truth. Because when you hear the truth, you immediately reject it. Now, many of the things that I teach and, and that I experience and what I do in deliverance as an exorcist or a deliverance minister, that there was a time that I would have never believed it. There was a time, because of my science and engineering background, there's no way that that could be possible. Well, this was a lie that was perpetrated onto us through science, science being controlled by the Rockefellers, by the Belderbergers, by uh, those that have, have paid the education system to only teach a belief system of one way. That's right. And so if you go into the rest of the world, if you go to India, if you go to Pakistan, if you go to some of the other countries, uh, even down in Mexico, Spiritualism or, or demonic manifestations or those things that are constantly uh, exposing themselves as a spirit are common. They are just every day. This is the way it is. But in America, we have shows that are paranormal investigation. We have to go looking for it. Well, when, when you walk into a Christian church... And they're doing, you know, like I was mentioning, you know, I saw a little poster about the Kundalini. I have cast out so many Kundalini spirits. Now, Kundalini is a broad term for those spirits that infect the mind and the body. And a Kundalini in particular is like a serpent that wraps around the spine. So when you have somebody that barks like a dog or they have, the, they, they shake, um, they even serpentine. I've had people look like they're snakes and were sitting right in the seat. That as I put my hand in the small of the back towards the base of the spine and I command this thing to come up, that as it comes up, that all of the particular demons and the type that they are start to show themselves. And of course, I'll get people who will throw up. I get people who yawn. I get people who burp. And unfortunately, if they've been sexually molested, they'll pass gas, you know, demons leave the way that they've come in. And, and so when, when you see that there is a infection rate amongst those in the Christian church, amongst those in, in public office, those within the education system, it's very hard to believe the truth. And when you hear something, you should always question it. If you have something that I call a witness. Otherwise, when if I'm talking to somebody or I'm interviewing them, and I come across, um, you know, I get a word of knowledge, and I'll say, "Did you have an uncle that committed murder?" Well, then I'll get what's called a witness. I, I get a a peace or a stillness within my own spirit that confirms that the words that I just spoke revealed the very curse within that generation. And then I can address it forward from there. And if the person may not even know it, or if they did know it, they can confess. And we can have them renounce. We can have them repent and standing in proxy of the family that was under this curse. And it's amazing what gets turned around. So the lies and the deception that are out there are, have been there for so many generations. And that deliverance has not been done over the years. That we are layered on layer on layer. Now, how much more do you have? We're, we're running, we can go over a little bit, but I, I did want to address where you came from, if you'd like to talk about that. You were in GLOW. You, <laughs> you, you, know, you spent time bumping elbows with those in Hollywood. You've been in cults. You've been in, uh, in your research and uh, in investigation. You find connections over and over and over again with MK Ultra. Yes, even even your son was in psyops or or a different uh, intelligence agencies in the military. It's the probability and the 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 amount of exposure is just too much. There must be something in common. Do you want to address that? 
Um, yeah, that would be probably a whole show in itself because there's a lot of information I've dug up over the years. Um, just real briefly, it, it did start with uh, what woke me up was my mom telling me that she was having memories of being locked in a cage. And I did a little research and I saw some things that kind of struck me funny and I just kind of put it on the back burner. But then more stuff would come up and she'd have some more unusual things, um, you know, people digging through her car in hoodies at night. I mean, it was just a lot of stuff. And at the same time, I was also going through a divorce with my husband and I was also having weird things happen. I worked in Pasadena right next to we shared parking lots with the Scottish Rite in Pasadena. And I've been to sites like JPL. I've been to the old Skunk Works. I used to work in the old Skunk Works building. And uh, there was some interesting thing I saw in the basement that was left behind in the soundproof uh, building. That was the old top secret <laughs> soundproof building. Such as shackles? Yes, on right? the ceiling. <laughs> shackles on the ceiling. On the ceiling. Right. I, I, that just baffled me. Um, not handcuffs, but actually like bolts like you'd see on Frankenstein tables. Uh, why they would be on the ceiling, I don't know. Um, however, I, I've had a lot of different things. Uh, I did live in a hippie commune in the 70s. Uh, the person that ran it was an ex-USAF officer at Maxwell. And Maxwell's on the Fritz Springmeyer list of being a programming site where my mom went to college. Um, also, my mom grew up in Ontario, Canada, which was like a little hotbed. That's where I believe MK Ultra Girl, that's famous in the picture, she was from there. Um, my entire family, I believe on both sides, I know for a fact on my father's side and I believe on my mother's side, were into masonry in Canada. And uh, my grandfather on my dad's side was the head of the Moose Lodge in Windsor. Um, my dad came to America because Ford, which is also part of MK Ultra, Ford Motor Company, gave him a job. I mean, the list just goes on and on. My mom was named after Shirley Temple, um, the famous little beta kitten uh, child star. Um, it just, it just goes on and on, living at a commune, um, a lot of weird experiences. They did some testing on us there, you know, IQ testing and a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say astral travel, but a lot of New Age stuff. Um, we were called elves. The camp was called Lothlorien. Um, we were taken to see Watership Down when I was a kid, and that struck me and triggered me horribly because there were dead bloody rabbits everywhere. Um, there, um, my mom's favorite movie to this day is Alice in Wonderland. She, she wants to do a whole mural going down to the basement of Alice and falling down the stairs. My mom, I, I brought up this MK. Oh, she was on her own since the age of 12. Um, she remembers, um, some kind of abuse, inappropriate touching and, and much, maybe much worse, but she doesn't like to talk about it. Um, there's just so much. It goes on and on and on. And I did, after um, living at that camp, you know, a couple years later, I ended up going to California. And I lived in the San Fernando Valley, where a lot of this stuff went on. Um, and like you mentioned, there was GLOW and some connections there with... Um, and, and what is GLOW? The, go <laughs> the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. I was an 80s wrestler. Okay, I got instantly hired, um, which was great, and I played the sex kitten called Jailbait. So, go figure. <laughs> Anyways. Um, and, and the man who actually ran it uh, was married to who? Um, Jane Mansfield. <laughs> and Jane Mansfield is known for what? I know that she was uh, good friends with Anton LaVey, I believe. That's right. And so, again, when you add up all the connections... When you connect all the dots, the probability or the possibility of this uh, is not by mistake. Yeah, it just there's just too many things to be a coincidence. I mean, I even have a, an older brother who has had uh, some unusual events. Uh, his He lives right over, I mean, literally over top of Site R, uh, Raven Rock, which is a top secret facility over by Camp David. My brother actually lives on the mountain right there about a mile from the entrance. So he probably lives right over top of it. Um, and his wife worked for the company that would uh, 
employ people in out of Washington, D.C., and they'd take a busload into Raven Rock every day. Um, anyways, unfortunately, she died several years ago at the age of 42. Um, she died of lung cancer and did not even smoke. So there's just a lot of weird things in my life and in my family's life. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe one day I can do a little more, <laughs> a little more on that. Um, do I have time to go over some body language? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so I'm, I love Bombard body language. Um, she also goes by Body Language Ghost on YouTube. But I found that she has um, a couple videos. If you go to Bombard's Body Language uh, website, she has some videos that talks about belief systems. And I was watching some of her videos, and I was taking notes. Um, some things you will physically notice about people who are stuck in a belief system. You'll notice this. They'll avoid eye contact. Their eyes will glaze over like, hello, nobody's home. <laughs> you know, you could say, hey, look, I've got this picture of uh, this proof of blah, blah, blah. They won't even look at it. Their eyes just kind of like, duh. Um, people who get stuck in belief systems, they'll, they might cross their arms. Um, uh, you'll notice sometimes they'll put their hands up like a stop position, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, is this like they're pushing away the facts, like, whoa, 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 keep that away from me. Um, they, they might be squirmy in their chair. Um, you notice this on a political debate show. She was showing an example of a man who was being questioned. You could just tell he was just kind of looking around the room, squirming in his chair. chair. He just wasn't even really into the interview. Um, he was mentally disengaged, okay? Well, just, you know, picking at his nail, nails, staring at the wall, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so the, what it is is their mind is so made up that if you could tell them otherwise, you know, X, Y, Z facts, their mind's made up. They're not going to take it in. They're not even going to look. Um, now, here's some body language symptoms I wrote down that when somebody is stating their belief, like... It's ridiculous. Um, uh, here's one that really, before I tell you the symptoms, one, one is that Rachel Dol Dolichel, I, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing her name wrong, but she is a 100% white woman, blonde hair, green eyed, white woman, very Caucasian. And uh, she want to be, she wanted to be black so bad, she ended up going to um, a university on a scholarship because they couldn't tell by the name and she had checked the African American box. And she just went under the assumption, her own belief system, that she was black. She didn't care. She's black. Everybody else better just accept her as black, <laughs> even though the DNA said otherwise. And um, she's been um, in the news. I mean, you can Google her and see her whole story. But she still holds to that today, even though her parents have been out on the news saying, we don't know why she's saying that. That's not true. Um, anyways, back to the body language when someone is stating their beliefs, okay? You, they'll have, like, their nose up in the air. They have that, that smug, duper's delight smile, like, superiority, like, you know, like, I'm in control and I know what I'm talking about is fact. They'll have that, that, that uh, you know, that, that, those symptoms. Um, another thing uh, bomb guard or Bombard <laughs> points out is sometimes they'll have that believe me look, like their eyebrows and their eyes are stretched up really high on their forehead you know they're raising their eyes they have big eyes and they're like you know that's the believe me look so um those are things that those are ways you can tell uh physically that somebody is stuck in a belief system um i just wanted to go into why people fall for it do we have time okay so um the reason why people are in belief systems is most people are indoctrinated they believe what they believe and told that that's what it is. Um, they don't know how to think critically for themselves. They, they feel safer being part of the hive mind or the group. Um, it gives them a sense of power, I guess. Um, some people are just lazy. They just believe what, like, okay, well, Snopes says it isn't true, so it isn't true. And they won't go that extra step because they're lazy. They don't want to research it for themselves. Um, and some people, they just don't care. Their conscience is seared, and their hearts and their minds are closed off to, to worldviews and other possibilities. 
you know, and that that's really sad. Okay, that's that's pretty demonic. If you can't, if somebody's not willing to look at facts, their conscience is seared, and that's it. And I mean, in my grandfather's day, back in the old days, you know, they were pretty prejudiced. And thank goodness, a lot of that's changed. But you know, you could show them facts and say, you know, they. But their mind stuck. Their mind stuck back into what they were raised to believe. Yeah, it, it's um, it, it's part of a uh, education system or one that has been implemented within a family that you grew up with it and you just became part of it. And I, unfortunately, too, was exposed to that. And when I think I was 16, 17 years old, I determined, um, kind of rant and raving like they were, realizing that I really didn't feel that way. That wasn't who I was. That's not what was part of my constitution. And it was from that point forward that I had changed. I, that just wasn't in. And, and, of course, deliverance can change. Everything you just said can be changed in deliverance. When you have a belief system that is contrary to the facts, again, this is part of witchcraft. So when that is broken off of you, then you go back, default basically back to the truth. That's right. Well, I want to go over to, uh, I want to talk about, well, what's the big deal? So what? I have a belief system, okay? But um, here's a quote from Evita Ochel, and it says, Until you realize how easy it is for someone, for, for your mind to be manipulated, you remain the puppet of someone else's game, okay? So um, it's dangerous. They're dangerous. Why? Because you can't reason with somebody stuck, in a belief system. It's like trying to reason with a drunk or a toddler. It ain't happening. <laughs> um, you can't get anywhere. There's no progress. You're stuck. Um, nobody wants to meet in the middle. Um, if you're in a belief system, you're basically, you're brainwashed and you can be manipulated. You can be manipulated to do a lot of things, how you're going to vote, what you're going to buy. Um, propaganda experts exploit you all the time and you don't even realize it if you're stuck in a belief system you're a danger to yourself and to others think about that's what antifa and kkk and all those hate groups they're stuck in a in a silly belief system okay their mind is seared their conscious is closed so um i'd like to just say who's doing this who's running the show i mean do you know scott because i know what it is <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I've always said the devil's in the details. And, and when you have people who are infected with hatred, with, with uh, ought, with uh, murderous demons, because in, in reality, as a, as a society, when we behave this way, there are people who will perish. That someone has to die. Someone will die. There are those who become so depressed and they're so rejected. They're so abandoned they commit suicide. So the ultimately what's happening is the demonic stronghold within society, within individuals, is, is a plague that causes death and destruction. It's, it's why Jesus spoke the words that he did. We're, we're to love one another. Now, we, we love them in truth. We, we love them in knowledge. We love them in a behavior that shows a godly choice. And a godly choice, if, if you're acting in, in an opposite direction, if you're not godly, meaning that you're rebellious, that, uh, that, that you commit different things that, that is considered an abomination, this is infectious to the rest of, of those within the group, within the city, within a country, within a town. And, and so that has to stop. So somebody has to stand up and say, hey, I'm not going to tolerate your behavior that is infecting my children. I'm not going to tolerate things that you do that will potentially put my family at risk. Do you understand? I've had recently some say that, you know, you don't have the right to do this. You don't have the right. No, I do have the right. I am called to do it. Because if it is in contrary to, the, to what God wants us to be and what is the final conclusion, meaning peace, 
peace and love if I have to stand up as a man and take action, take authority, and become somewhat of a brute for a period of time in order to stop the threat, then I'm going to do it. Because if I allow my family to be harmed, then for every abuse, for every infraction, everything that is done to an innocent individual, whether it's a child, whether it's a woman, whether, whether it's a, a young man, that is an opening for demonic. That means that when you were abused, the devil does not play fair. If you were a child and you were sexually molested, the molester transferred demons to you. And that opened up the door because of the abomination. We were never intended as humans to have this happen, that you got a demon. So I have to stand up and say, no, you are not going to abuse my children. You're not going to abuse my wife. You're not going to abuse this family. Because if you do, then my family gets demons. And that is not what God wants. He wants us to stand and expose and to eliminate to occupy, to spread the gospel, to make disciples of all men. And if that means that I have to draw the sword and move forth, then I will do it. Because if I don't do it, then I am in agreement with evil. Yeah, and it seems to be everywhere. Um, I was looking at, there are, there are think tanks all around the world that are actually, they spend their time researching and have a panel of experts on how to sway you through political or economic uh, means, which basically means they are paid to teach people how to mind control you. And it's every day. Every day we are all under it. You, you could go to the movie theater and you smell popcorn and then you hear the fizzle of the Coke and you want to go buy a concession. That's mind control. That's, that's all run by think tanks. Um, what I want to do before we close out is just um, maybe go over a couple of quotes um, from <laughs> uh, that, that kind of proof that they're actually admitting what they're doing. Um, so the first one is from Brzezinski. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but he says, Shortly, the public will be unable to reason or think for themselves. They'll only be able to parrot the information that's been given them on the previous night's news. Okay. Ah, Joseph Mengele. He says, the more we do to you, the less you seem to believe we are doing it. Hello, does that not register, you guys? Come on. Um, Huxley, in A Brave New World, he says, one believes things that has been conditioned to believe them. Okay. So I just want to say mind control, belief systems, it's all the same, worldviews. And we all suffer from it. And the only way we're going to be able to change it, um, here's a quote from Aristotle. It is a mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Okay? So we need to realize, admit, the puppet masters have been pulling our strings. They do it daily, all day long. We need to realize that we're all under the spell of witchcraft, which is part of a belief system. We need to repent and ask the Lord to forgive us and ask him to open our minds. Uh, we need to analyze and look at our behavior and see why do we feel this way? Why, why, do I, why am I afraid when somebody who has a cap on backwards and baggy pants, why do they fr frighten me? I mean, come on now. We need to, to start looking at our own behavior. We need to stop labeling and blaming people. Stop making assumptions about uh, assumptions about others and we need to put our emotional our personal emotions aside and stand back and view the situation from all sides through a logical viewpoint okay and most of all this is really important is we have to trust our guts don't trust your eyes trust your guts um i just um i i i'll use the the the, the uh the example from the movie kim king pin <laughs> Uh, I can't think of the character's name, but Woody Harrelson's in the movie, and um, he got caught trying to swindle the swindlers. And uh, they're about to stick his hand in the bowling ball chute um, where he loses his, his hand. Um, and he looks up at the father. One of the bad guys in the group was wearing a priest collar, and he's like, Father, help! <laughs> and the guy, like, rips off the collar. Yeah, right, I'm a father. The, the point is, don't let your eyes deceive you. Just because somebody's wearing cologne and is pretty or, you know, dresses nice or has a nice smile with beautiful teeth, that doesn't mean they're angelic. 
trust your gut, okay? Yeah, and that was part of the message of last week, too. So, anyways, in, in the beginning of it, I apologize, Patricia. I said, Patrick, I never call you Patricia. <laughs> I call you Trish. And I wrote it down, and I, out of the corner of my eye, I said, Patrick, because I have two friends that are named Patrick. So I made that mistake. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, well, that, you know, I'm the, I'm the grumpy old exorcist. You affectionately refer to me as that, and that's why I, I put the show up for this. <laughs> But uh, last week, we only live an hour and a half from the entrance of Yosemite, and we had the opportunity to see some of the most incredible country yeah. uh, environment, and, and being the age that I am, I actually got a great discount in a year's pass <laughs> for hardly anything, because I'm a grumpy old exorcist. <laughs> and, and so I just, if anyone gets, gets a chance to see this beautiful country, get out and do it, because... I know it's not going to be here long. How much time we have, I don't know. Whether you believe in Trump, whether you believe in in other systems, it's all part of a world system that does not have our best interest. And so the only one that we can rely on is Jesus Christ. So turn to him and just understand that regardless, if you lose your life, at least you're losing in the service of Jesus, that means you will save it. Is there anything you'd like to close with? Uh, just uh, toodaloo. It's been fun. <laughs> okay. All right. And we will see you next week. As I mentioned, I'm going to be going down to Area 52 to see Eric Dollar to do the interview. And uh, it should be interesting. He's uh, quite a character. So. <laughs>